is to take light to a dark world. And that's what God has called us to do, and we're excited to do that. Brenda couldn't be with me this morning. Please lift her in prayer. Our insurance company's decided we don't need to take the, she doesn't need to take the regular diabetes medicine, that she needs to take a generic, and that is just messing her system up uh, terribly. So just please pray that we can get all this kind of worked out and get it taken care of. Amen? Amen. God is faithful. He, I need her beside me. She's a lot better looking than Jim. <laughs> so Jim got to come with me this morning and so uh, I appreciate Jim he's been a friend of mine for a long time he, he uh, we ride motorcycles together and he just uh, he's he's a good partner and friend of mine so I appreciate him plus he's an excellent welder okay. teach his young kids how to make a life for themselves mm -hmm. amen? amen well I'm excited to be here because I'm excited about missions because missions is what I do reaching the lost and see, you guys are here in an area that is your Jerusalem. Yes. Right. And whether you believe it or not, the people that live next to you, the people that you work with, are the people that you need to reach. That's right. Yeah. I go to places that you can't, many of you can never go. And that's okay because that's what God is sending Brenda and I to do. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 through 45, he says that the kingdom of heaven is like treasures hidden in a field. And when a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Father, I pray this morning, Lord, touch the hearts of the hearers of your word, Lord, ignite the flame in their heart yes. to help continue to reach the loss of this community, the loss of this state, and the lost of this country and world. In your holy, precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You see, there's hidden treasures all around us. And it's kind of fitting as the song that you sang up here, the last song that you sang is a mission song. It says, open my eyes and wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart. And if you sang those words and you mean those words, yes. then you better get ready. <laughs> Come on. Because God's going to put a burden in your heart for somebody in this community that needs lightness. Mm, yes. Because right now they're living in darkness and the only reason they can find lightness is through you. Mm -hmm. If you believe in this. Mm -hmm. And lead me in your love to those around me. Yes, that's right. Do you really want that? Yes. Yeah. Are you really sold out for Jesus? Amen. Yeah. Are you really wanting to reach the lost? Because, see, that's what Jesus wants this church to do. And as you send these young people to foreign soils and different, you send your pastor to the jail, maybe he needs to be locked up sometimes. <laughs> but he's going to share the gospel to a group of people who need light. He's got a captive audience. Mm, come on. They can't leave. Right. <laughs> But then there's places like where Brenda and I go, to the motorcycle rallies and functions across this country, to biker communities sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you probably think, well, why in the world do you want to go do something like that? Aren't you scared? Well, yeah, but I'm scared not to do it because that's what God told me to do. Come on. But over 15 years ago, I knelt at an altar. And I told God I would go and do whatever it was that he needed me to do. Yes. Amen. I got saved when I was 34 in a small rural community in a small church in North Missouri. And when I met Jesus that night, God began to transform my life. Yes. Born and raised Catholic, but then I found Jesus. Yes. And God began to do something in my heart and change my life. You see, there's treasure outside of these church walls. That's right. And Jesus sees value in all types of people. Amen. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Right. Jesus loves all people. That's right. Our country needs to start loving people. Amen. And that night, 15 years ago, when I walked into that biker bar and I looked around the room and I saw these long-haired, no-hair, piercing, leather-wearing, tattooed people. I told God, what in the world am I doing here? He said, David, remember that time that you told me that you would go and do whatever it is that I asked you to do? Uh, you got to bring that up, Lord. 
He said, I want you to love these people. Right. And God birthed in me and Brenda a love for a group of people that the church really doesn't care about. Mm -hmm. And you look at these words and it says, fill my Fill me with your heart. The heart of Jesus yes. is to see souls saved. Come on. Oh, Amen. So what are you doing about it, church? Amen. You can reach your Jerusalem, but there's Amen. places outside of Burlington, Amen. Kansas, that you can't reach. And that's why you have us as missionaries yeah. traveling to Sturgis, South Dakota, to Daytona Beach in Florida, to Leesburg Bike Fest in Florida, to Fayetteville, Arkansas for Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue, or to all the motorcycle dealerships and shops and motorcycle clubs that we go into to share the love of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. I did a wedding last night. We had an outreach yesterday at Chadwick in the ATV world. Uh, in the Nash National Forest for ATVs and motocross. And we did an outreach down there giving away free hot dogs and people. And, a, and one of the guys went off his motorcycle, hit a tree with his motorcycle, went off his motorcycle, hit the tree with his head. And they had to rush him. Some other four-wheeler people brought him out on the four-wheeler and they had to take him to the emergency room. Well, I got to go up to the guy before I left and say, hey, I'm a chaplain. Can I pray for you before you leave, Doug? His name's Doug. Remember Doug in your prayers, please. Don't know what's happened since then, but I haven't been able to make contact with this guy. But God puts us in places to reach the lost, and you see the great thing about it? You're an extension of us. So everywhere I go, you're a part of Amen. us. So when we get to heaven, and some big old burly biker comes up and gives <laughs> you a hug, don't run away. Let him hug you because he's going to tell you thanks for giving to the Pantleos for helping us Amen. to reach the lost. Amen? Amen. I did a wedding last night at 7 o'clock after we finished our outreach. I've been ministering to this mechanic in one of the motorcycle dealerships for three years. Two weeks ago, he came up to me. He says, I'd like you to perform my wedding. I said, okay. I said, and got to talking to him about his girlfriend and his girlfriend. They've been shacked up for seven years living together. But he finally realized that his life needed to change. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we got to do some premarital counseling with him the other day. This week I was meeting with him over lunch and a real bad biker bar, Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> We ate our dinner and began to talk to him. And I said, you know, I said, you guys are starting fresh on Saturday mm -hmm. as a couple. Amen. And in God's eyes, you're going to become one. Mm -hmm. I said, wouldn't it be great to be able to establish your relationship together with God in the middle of this? Mm -hmm. Recommit your hearts to the Lord yes. and ask him to forgive you of your past. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as we sat in Cracker Barrel, we held hands, Brenda and I and this couple, and they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. as our Lord and Savior. See, you're part of that. Amen. You're part of that because you send us to go to the remote places. You see, Jesus sees treasure in all types of people. The kingdom of heaven is something that should be de desired by all. Amen? That's right. We want everybody to go to heaven, but the hardest thing that I've found as a missionary is not everybody's going to go to heaven. But that still doesn't stop us. It shouldn't stop you. Amen. Because this words up here, I want you to understand, if you truly mean those words, and you go out on the streets of Burlington this week, and some old homeless guy comes up and puts his arms around you and starts talking to you, what are you going to do? Jesus sees value yes. in that person. And we have to get a mindset because it's not about what the person looks like on the outside. It's what's in the inside that counts. Amen. We can look in scripture and we can study scripture about all the different people and the misfits and the mishaz and has-beens and all of those different people that the world was going to throw away. But God took this guy who was over 80 years old who had committed murder and ran off to some remote part of the desert but God saw hidden treasure in a guy by the name of Moses. Moses had a burning bush experience with God. And God saw value in this guy that he knew that he had the power he could lead these people out of bondage. There was a guy by the name of Saul who used to kill people like us Christians. 
But on the road to Damascus one day, this bright light from heaven came down, and he heard this voice from heaven say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Yeah. And Saul became one of the greatest missionaries of all time, Paul. Yeah. Paul the Apostle that wrote over half of the New Testament. You see, God laid aside the very form of God to empty himself. And he sent his son yeah. to this earth to die for you, for me, and the people outside of this church this morning. Yeah. He loves them unconditionally. He died for those who are going to make fun of him, who are going to spit at him, who are going to laugh at him. He still loves them. And sometimes as a church, we get so bound up in our religiosity that we forget just because somebody looks a certain way, acts a certain way, talks a certain way. We can't have that person in heaven. Look at them. Well, look at that person. They're standing on the, standing on the street corner drinking a beer. Well, look at that person over there. Look at the language they're using. Well, how do we expect them to act? They're sinners. And I know pastors probably heard his share of talk but he still loves them God's put a burden in his heart to reach the incarcerated thank God it's him it's not me I try to reach him before they get there <laughs> but God's put a burden in his heart and into the church's heart to reach you see we need to understand that God is using us as a church to reach the lost in essence I I'm probably going to shoot myself in the foot for saying this, but we all should be missionaries. Come on. Yeah, that's the Hallelujah. truth. Come on. Is everybody in your family saved? If they're not, what's, what's the problem? Your family's the hardest person in the world to reach, amen? amen. Tell me about it. I know. <laughs> but Jesus will develop a process for you yes. because if you have heart like Jesus he will bring those people into your path amen. it's just how you're going to react when those people come into your path amen oh, that's right we were in Sturgis South Dakota doing pancakes at our pancake outreach out there and setting up with this guy coming with his ball cap and dark glasses he had piercings everywhere and all of these skull rings on his hand and you know if he just went up to you like that and scraped his hand to get you and cut your face that you need stitches because of these big crosses and skull bones and things he had in his rings. And he'd come in and he'd start eating pancakes with us. And, and he hardly would smile. And we kept loving on that guy and ministering to that guy and, and just loving on him and trying to share, show him the love of Jesus Christ. And sometimes it gets hard to minister to people who are in the dump. Yeah. But you see, Jesus sent the great trash man. To come to the dumps of the world to redeem That's right. those people. That's right. And if Jesus loves him, Hallelujah. why can't I help Jesus to reach him? That's right. And that's what we need to understand, that Jesus sees value in people. Amen. And we reach out to them and chuck this guy. For three years, I would minister to this guy and kept loving on him and kept thinking, God, is this ever going to happen? He's got tattoos all over him, tattooed on his neck, 666. Mm -hmm. And one day he came up to me and he said, you know what, chaplain, I need to talk to you. And I thought, okay, here we go. He said, you know I'm a Satan worshiper, don't you? I said, well, I, I kind of figured that. He said, but let me tell you what happened to me. He said, I was sitting in my room last night. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, I felt this hand touch the back of my neck. And he said, that hand worked its way down to my hand. And he said, and it scared me to death that I didn't know what else to do but cry out to God. What do I do? I said, Chuck, let me tell you something. Jesus loves you. He loves you unconditionally, and he doesn't care about your past. He cares about your future. Yeah. And that's what we in a church need to do, because in a small town, everybody knows everybody's past. Come on, yeah. And then some. And if they don't, they'll make it up. I told my wife, I said, I'd like to run for politics one day, but I'm afraid they'd find things about me that I didn't even know I did. <laughs> and that's what a community does sometimes. We come down hard on people. And we don't give them any hope. But Jesus gives them hope. Because Jesus sees value in these people. Amen? Hallelujah. 
Well, as I sat on a bench with Chuck that day and I began to share with him about God, I said, all you need to do is trust in Jesus, Chuck. And he'll forgive you of your past if you'd like to do that. And outside of this bench where we were doing free pancake breakfast, Chuck gave his heart to the Lord. Amen. Is he perfect? No. But none of us are. And Jesus has to work out the roughness in all of us. Amen. Amen. Jesus sees value in all kinds of people. You know, Jesus went to Samaria one day to see a woman. And all the disciples kept telling him, oh, you don't want to go see that lady. You don't want to go see that lady. Jews and Samaritans didn't get along. Not supposed to be together. This woman would go draw water at a well early in the morning and the, the, she'd have to wait until all the other ladies got out because it was 100 degrees out in the shade. She'd go to the well to get water. The rest of the world didn't want anything around her. This woman had been married five times and was already shacked up with another man. But see, Jesus saw treasure in this lady. He saw value in this person and he offered her a drink of living water. And she left and told everyone about this man who told her about her life. And the whole town came out to meet. You see, treasure is the opposite of trash. And the world right now is interested in filling our minds with trash. Everything that you see, everything that you, you read, the junk that is shown on TV, the movies, the media, the lies that the devil tells each of you. And we need to understand that Jesus is control of our life. If we totally submit ourselves to Jesus and follow him with all our heart, soul, and mind. Yeah. Because Jesus sees value in people. And as this church is planted in Burlington, Kansas, you're to reach your Jerusalem. But there's Samarias and the outermost parts of the world that you can't reach. And that's why this church supports missionaries that's why you believe in missions that's why you believe in, in heading out helping missionaries to, to complete the task of what they need to do because I tell you you guys are a part of what we do in our ministry whether we go every Tuesday to this bike shop and work at this bike shop or we go to this other bike shop and work Friday I was at the Indian motorcycle dealership doing ministry and they have a bunch of grass out for under their their store on the on the outer road and 65 highway across from James River tall grass I said you know what you guys got mowers out here if you'll let me borrow your mower I'll get out here and mow the grass for you oh you don't have to do that we got people that we pay to do that. I said, I know that. But your people are paid to sell things for you, aren't they? Yeah. I said, why don't you let me do that? Because I want to see your business succeed. Why would you want to do that? Jesus sees value in people. You see, we have to build relationships with people. We have to love on people because it's very hard for you to go up to somebody on a street corner and smash them upside the head with the Bible and say, you need Jesus. You need to get saved. Well, saved for what? We use our christian -y terminology in many times to talk to people, and you have to forget that the lost doesn't understand what you're talking about. True. You need to, they need to see from your actions of what you say. And just like I said, it took three years of ministering to the guy that I performed his wedding, Ray and Tiffany, yesterday. Three years of loving on these people, ministering to them until the right opportunity came to introduce them to Jesus. Several years ministering to Chuck and Sturgis, loving on him, ministering to him, sharing the gospel to him. It's simple. Jesus loves them. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. I was with some Native American missionaries in Sturgis. We went out to eat and we were traveling back and some drunk guy hit us. Mm -hmm. South Dakota police, Rapid City police came and they began to try to get all the facts. One of the girls was kind of hurt. There was a three car pile up. And so the ambulance came. They were taking her off. And so I hopped out of the we hopped out of the car and we were talking to people and I went over as they were loading this girl up in the ambulance and my wife and I went, I said, can we pray for her as you take her to the hospital? Sure, we climbed in the ambulance, began to pray for this young girl to 
to be touched by Jesus as he takes her on. The drunk guy, they're talking to him, they handcuff him. They get him in the car and they got the window down. And I was leaning into that window and talking to him, kind of like pastor is talking to their foot. Their, what do you call that? Feed door. Feed door. And I was talking to this guy and I said, I told him his name. I said, listen, you're not going to get straight until you get Jesus in your heart. I said, Jesus loves you. And what, what opportunity do you think that Jesus allowed all this to happen, that you were in a wreck where two missionaries are here? Because Jesus loved you enough yes. that we were involved in this accident to be here at the appropriate time. That's right. That's right. And I told the officer, I said, can I stick my hand in that window and, and hold that guy's hand? I said, he needs Jesus and he wants to accept Jesus. The officer said, you go right ahead. And I led this guy to the Lord, Hallelujah. handcuffed, oh. tears coming out of his eyes. The only thing that's going to help him is Jesus. That's right. Because yeah. I don't care what government program you have. Jesus is the answer. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Jesus sees value in all types of people. And we have to understand that. That if these people don't have Jesus, where are they going? You see, hell is interested in taking a young life and filling it with drugs. Hell is interested in taking a young man and getting him hooked on pornography. Hell is interested in taking a young lady and turning her into a prostitute. Hell is interested in getting them hooked on alcohol. Hell is interested in destroying your family and families around this world. But the great trash men sift through the dust of this world to find hidden treasure in all types of people. That's right. That's right. And at the appointed time, God's going to put you to the person you need to yes. share Jesus' love with. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Many of us can't go and do what we're called to do without churches sending us to go do what God has called us to do. And as we reach the lost around our world as U.S. missionaries, you're helping us to fulfill that. Jesus sees value in each of you today. So I want you to think for a minute. Are you where you need to be with the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus loves you like you are. He doesn't want you to get fixed and then come to him. He loves you like you are. Close your eyes for a second. Do you know Jesus? Is your heart filled with Jesus' love? Has he forgives you of your sins? If he hasn't, today's your day. Say, Jotham Dave, I need that joy in my life. I need Jesus back in my life. Is that you? Do you need Jesus this morning? If you do, raise your hand because I want to pray with you. Or maybe you're sitting here this morning and you've given your heart to the Lord, but because of all this stuff around you, the things of the world has brought you down and you just really question in your walk with the Lord and you just need a rejuvenation in your spirit. <coughs> you need that joy back in your heart. Come on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you need a clean heart, as David cried out. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew that right spirit in me. Is that you this morning? Oh, if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray with you. I want you to open your eyes for a second. This is the most exciting time for us as missionaries because I tell you, we put lots of miles on our vehicles, lots of miles on our motorcycles. We cook lots of hot dogs and brats and food and give all this stuff away. And why do you say, why do you do that? Because the gospel is free. Come on. Yes. The gospel is free. So we share the love of Jesus because the more people eat, the more they drink. We have cups that have the gospel salvation message on it. The more they do that, the longer they sit, the more they eat, the more we can share the love of Jesus Christ with these people. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And Brenda and I want to say thank you for believing in missions and believing in missionaries. But you see, times are running short. 
We're in our last times. You got a long, young lady heading to Panama. Oh God, the lives she can touch by landing her foot on that soil in Panama. And the gospel, as light hits that airstrip and she lands and she gets out of that plane and steps on that ground in Panama, the amount of light that she can show to the lost is tremendous. And you guys are part of that. But things like that can't happen without churches. And individuals helping her do what God's called us her to do, like what God has called us to do. Today is your faith promise giving. And I think you have one of these in your seats. Pick that up. I want you to look at that. It says faith promise. What, is, what does that mean? Anybody know? It's by faith. You're believing God's going to supply the money that you put on here. Amen? Amen. By faith. Yes. But just like in tithing, God says, test me. Give me your tithe. Test me to see if I will not bless you. The same thing that he's doing with the faith promise. Test me. You see, many of you may be given a, a certain amount of money. But now God's going to get... To the point where he makes you feel uncomfortable and he's going to say stretch yourself a little bit Amen. we're missionaries ourselves and we support missionaries because if I didn't believe in this process I wouldn't be doing this right. and I can't tell you how the number of times God knows exactly what we need and as missionaries, we thank you for your giving to us. And every day you're lifted in prayer because of the blessing you give to us. So I'm asking you today to take your faith promise. Are you going to collect these today, Pastor Tim? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Take time to look at this right quickly, and I'm going to give you a few minutes. I want you to fill that out. If you give... $20 a month to missions, I challenge you. Step it up $5 more a month. Step it up $10 more a month. Step it up $100 more a month. 